friends welcome to video tutorial of shopify salesforce connector it helps to integrate shopify contents with salesforce crm now dealing with e-commerce unlimited data is much easier than never before this connector is acting as a bridge between shopify and salesforce i'll proceed with the features installation and synchronization process of this connector so first of all let's proceed to understand the features of this application. If we talk about features, it provides a unified Salesforce platform to manage both e-commerce and CRM data at a single place. It has concept of multi-store oriented integration in which you can synchronize data from multiple Shopify stores to a single Salesforce CRM and manage them effectively, which helps for the effective utilization of multiple Shopify stores in a single Salesforce CRM. It can help to synchronize e-commerce data at Salesforce and to avail all CRM benefits. Salesforce-centric configuration, which helps to configure the application at the Salesforce end. It helps to synchronize collections from Shopify to Salesforce, orders and product synchronization to manage inventory effectively, and customer synchronization as contacts and accounts at Salesforce end. It has interactive design with interface which is going to be effective on the data utilization. This is all about the features and there are lots of things to explore once we install and configure this successfully. So let's proceed to configure the Shopify end settings and further we will proceed to install the eShop sync for Shopify at the Salesforce end. It's quite easy to just configure everything at the Shopify and the Salesforce end. So I'm proceeding with the Shopify admin panel. So you need to click on apps and go to manage private apps over here. Now you need to generate API credentials. Over here, you need to just enter the private app name as per your choice and the contact email over here. Further, you need to go through all these options that is a store content like article. This will provide access to the Shopify contents. So you need to update the access and provide rewrite access, whatever the things are optional over here in the drop down. So you need to update for all the options mentioned over here. Once you are done with all the uh, content update of the accessibility of the rewrite and accesses on all the contents. So now you need to check mark this option and click on save that will generate API key and password of this private app that will be required at the Salesforce in, in order to establish connection. So this will be the API key and the password that is required at the Salesforce in. Now let's proceed with the Salesforce in and to install eShop Sync for Shopify. Now on the app exchange, you need to search for eShop Sync for Shopify and click on get it now in order to install this application. Further, it will ask to install whether in production or sandbox, so proceed accordingly. On the next page, you will be getting information related to this application, like the product name, version, and all the things. So just check marks and go through the terms and conditions and confirm and install. Further, you need to log in with your Salesforce credential. So once you get logged in with the Salesforce credentials and uh, follow the steps to install the eShop Sync for Shopify and you will be redirected upon successful installation of this application in the Salesforce install packages page. So over here, first of all, we need to update few settings and uh, we need to create some uh, changes in this backend panel of Salesforce. The first setting that we need to update is you need to search for certificate key management and you need to Create one certificate from here. Create sales sign certificate. And you need to update the name as Shopify. And the unique name should be same. And click on save without making any changes. So as we have created one certificate, now you need to go to remote settings, remote site settings over here. And you need to create two remote sites. First, for the one for the Salesforce, another one for the Shopify. So we will create one by one. You need to enter the remote site name and the remote site URL. 
So now I have mentioned the remote site name at Shopify underscore URL. Make sure that there is no any space in between the two words. And uh, further, to get the remote site URL of our Shopify store, so you need to copy the URL of your store till shopify.com and copy it and paste it over here. And now save. Make sure it is active and then save. Again, you need to create one for from the remote site settings. You need to create one site for Salesforce. So now I have mentioned remote site name for Salesforce underscore configuration for the Salesforce URL. And to get the remote site URL of Salesforce, so you need to go to drop down of the app menu and click on eShop Sync for Shopify. And uh, click on Shopify Salesforce connector. And you need to go to configurations and you need to copy the URL over here till visual.force.com complete URL till force.com and you need to paste it over here. And now make sure it is active and click on save. So we have successfully created two remote sites, one for shop URL and one for Salesforce. So now as we are done with the, the configuration of the certificate and the remote site, there are a few settings that we need to update that is the field accessibility on the various profiles. So for that we need to go to objects. First of all, I will go to customize accounts and account fees and uh, you need to scroll down and go to custom fees over here you will be getting all the fees created by eShop Sync for Shopify and uh, so we need to update the field accessibility of these fields so click on the field name and click on view field accessibility and you need to go to system admin and over here you will be getting hidden so click on hidden and make sure that for the profile that is system admin and for the page layout it should be visible so both the check boxes should be check mark and click on save now so you need to follow this step for all the custom fields created by eShop Sync for Shopify as I have done with the Shopify customer ID so you need to do for shop URL and for the verified email and also on this other subjects like contacts products orders and contracts so these are the objects on which you need to go to the customer fields and you need to update the field accessibility so now as we have updated the field accessibility for all the objects accounts contacts products orders so now we need to uh, establish connection between these two platforms so we need to go to app and uh, in the eShop Sync for Shopify we need to click on Shopify Salesforce connector tab over here you need to update Shopify shop URL API key and password that you have just generated on the Shopify end so get the API details and fill in over there and the shop URL that you need to take from here till myshopify.com paste it over here and click on save by just selecting the concern price book so you need to select the price book at all accordingly and click on save and you will get a confirmation that information has been successfully so now we need to proceed to synchronize data so first we need to proceed to collections and here are a few options that this is to synchronize data from Shopify to Salesforce and uh, once you have synchronized you need to click on refresh to reflect the changes over here 
and over here we have option to extend the records per page and also we have filters down here so based on the as you can connect multiple Shopify stores to this single Salesforce so you will be getting all the shop name over here and you can select and filter the desired result and also you can select the org type for Salesforce or Shopify existing records and also for the collection type you cannot filter over here so this filter option you will be getting in all the sections for products customers and orders and based on that you can search the desired result so let's proceed to synchronize click on sync and it will start the synchronization process so you can see that the total collection in Shopify records over here and the synced one and the unsynced details so all the details will be reflected upon successful synchronization now you need to click on refresh button to reflect the changes down here and it will list down all the details as here you can extend the records per page and in the same way all the details will be listed down so if you want to just check the collection directly up to the Shopify admin panel so there is an option you can click on this option and it will take you to the Shopify admin panel of this concerned collection so with the help of this button you can directly manage the Salesforce and the Shopify backend panels so now you can do the same synchronization as you can check the number of records over here that is 815 the total number of records and you can delete this specific one you can synchronize if there is any update that you have made on this collection so you can click on this to update this and uh, the changes that has been made on the Shopify in on this record will get reflected over here so now let's proceed to synchronize products In the process section you need to just click on sync data and it will start the synchronization process so in the same way you can refresh the page and the changes will reflect down here with the total number of records gets synchronized and if you click on this product name it will take you to the default Salesforce page in which you will be getting all the information like product name product image URL that is fetched from the Shopify and the shop URL uh, this is the unique field on this which is responsible for any update on this uh, product object and all the details you will be getting the price book information and the standard price and the existing price book and also if you want to directly check this product in the Shopify admin panel so you can click on this option and it will take you to the concern page in the Shopify end. so this is the functionality that we have added just now and uh, you can in the same way you can uh, add filter in the product section if you have multiple Shopify stores so you can search based on that based on the org type and the collection type as well and also we have added price book filtration over here so products will get listed in that specific price book based on the functionality that you will select and if you want to search for any specific product so then you need to hit suppose so if you want to search for this product so you need to click on the icon and all the details will reflect down over here so this is all about the functionality of this product synchronization let's proceed with the customer sync these are all the existing Salesforce products sorry customers in which uh, you are not getting the option to check for the Shopify admin panel so these are all the Salesforce existing customers so now we need to synchronize customers from Shopify end so now the total customers that is existing in Shopify is 4 and synchronized successfully 4 so click on refresh to reflect the changes so you can notice that one of the 
customer that has been synchronized with Shopify ID is available and it has been option to check the details as the Shopify end. So all the details will be reflected. So the default address mentioned over here will be reflected in the account as a billing address, right? And the shipping address will be uh, synchronized accordingly. So the default address is mainly synchronized and mapped with the billing address of the account. And in the contact, it is mapped with the mailing address. So this is the mapping part of the customers that we talk about. And let's add filters to verify. So let's suppose we have added this Shopify store. So you in the search result, you can find that for this specific store, we have five or four customers over here. So this is all about the customer synchronization. So let's proceed with the order synchronization. In the same way, you need to click on sync data. Now let's start the synchronization. So it's, it is synchronized successfully. Click on refresh and data will get listed down like this. So the order number, order name, the Salesforce ID, Shopify order ID, which is unique for order object and the account. If it is not having the account name, then the email address will be reflected down here, the total amount. And if you want to check this order at the Shopify, in the same way you can click on that icon and it will take you to the order page or directly to the Shopify end. And uh, in the Salesforce, if you want to check this product, so you need to click on the order number and it will take you to the orders page over here. Like in the billing address, the shipping address is mapped accordingly, with the account details and the order amount, the shop URL, the shop order name, the shop by order ID, which is unique for the updation of this record. The order items are stored in the order products with all the details in the line description. You will be getting all the variations of this. So this is the synchronization of this Shopify orders, collections, products and customers. So as we have done with the synchronization for a single store, so if you want to add another Shopify store, so first of all, you need to follow the same step in order to add a remote site of that specific Shopify uh, store in the remote site settings that I have guided you for this. And once you get done with that, then you need to generate API details uh, in that specific Shopify store that would be required over here in order to connect that Shopify store with this Salesforce. And in the same way, you need to mention the and paste the Shopify URL of that another Shopify store with the API details that you have generated. And as per the requirement, you need to select the price book and click on save. Then another Shopify store will get connected with this Salesforce CRM and you can sync the data accordingly. So this is all about the functionality of this. So if you have any issue further, you may go through this blog as I have already mentioned all these steps over here with the pre-configuration settings that you need to take care of with all the configuration steps. So you may go through this blog as well. So thanks a lot for your time and hope you like this. Have a great day.